May I speak in the name of our God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. In May 2013, there was a 13-year-old called Arvind Mahankali, and he correctly spelled the word, the word Kneidel. Uh, that's a Jewish, uh, Yiddish-German word for dumpling. And in doing so, he won the 86th Scripps National Spelling Bee. Now, he had finished third each of the previous two years, and in both of these, those years, he was eliminated for a particular reason, he failed to correctly spell a German-derived word, like the, this German-Yiddish word, Kneidel. Uh, he was, because of that, he made preparation for his third attempt. And in doing so, he said, he said this, this is his a quote after he had won. He said, this year I prepared German words and I studied them, so that when I got German words this year, I wasn't worried. And so, he won, with spelling the word Kneidel. If you're interested, it's spelled K-N-A-I-D-E-L. There's no shortcut, really, to being able to do stuff. You, 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 have to, you simply have to know how to do it. And in today's Gospel passage, which I'm just going to make some remarks about now, we learn how to do it, how to be witnesses for Jesus, how to, how to successfully be his disciples and follow his commands. There's a command that is central to what we are to do, and that is to tell others the good news that Jesus is King, that the Kingdom of God is near because the King is coming, the King is arriving, people need to get ready. And the way we are to do it is to show them, and to do that with authority, and to do that together. In fact, there are two main points that I want to make. As Christians, we are called to tell people that Jesus is King, that he, Jesus is in charge, and this changes everything. It's good news. But we are called to do this not alone, but together. Point one, we're called to do it together. And secondly, point two, we are called to do it in Jesus' authority. He has given us authority. It's not because we are great or we are good that we can tell people uh, the way that's best to live their lives, or the, that uh, we know who, which direction to go in, or that we can tell people what's right and wrong. It's in Jesus' authority. We can point them to God's Word in Scripture, and we can point them to knowing Him and being filled with His Spirit as the way to live out a good and fulfilling life. We do it in Jesus' name and together. So looking at our passage today, which is in Luke chapter 10, uh, verses 1 to 11, then 16 to 20, it's printed in your notice sheet in both St. Luke's and St. Paul's. You'll be able to see that the Lord chose 72 men and sent them out two by two to go ahead of him to every town and place where he himself was about to go. So they were announcing that Jesus is coming, just as we're called to announce, Jesus is here, you need to know him. He's the one who's in charge. He chose 72, or in some translations it says 70. Uh, this number, either 70 or 72, symbolizes all the world, all the nations, all the Gentiles. So they were sending them out into all the world, uh, in this case just in, into the local towns and villages, but symbolically into all the world, which includes even Seacom and Paltom. It's here that we are to tell people that the Kingdom of God is present. Now we do this, practically we're doing this, by inviting people into things, uh, going out, telling people through social media, going to their door, giving out flyers, people we know and people who are part of our family or, or our circle of friends. We invite them to events that are going on, or we invite them to come along with us and be part of our experience of worship. Or we go out and actually do events out on the street like we sometimes do as churches together or out in the pub. Uh, we go and tell people and invite people into worship of Jesus. So in going out, we are commanded to do it, but we're commanded to do it as Jesus teaches us here in this Gospel passage, together. Together we have Jesus' authority to go out and to confront evil. And we confront evil by telling people that Jesus is in charge, that they need 
him, just as we need him. And this authority is important. It, it, it gives you a different attitude. You see, in praying for people, we call upon Jesus, Jesus' name. We ask him to answer our prayers. But in confronting evil, confronting disease, uh, in telling people about Jesus, we're doing so in Jesus' name. We don't need to ask him again. He's given us that authority, authority to speak for him, to say that you need to know Jesus just as I have needed him so much. And we're to do that together. It's like this. Say you were driving down the street and a car were to come along and park behind you. You wouldn't necessarily stop, even if they were sort of flashing at you. Why should you stop? Because another car has stopped behind you. But if that were a police car, you almost certainly would, because they have the authority. And the disciples found this. They found, uh, this is a reading from the passage, uh, verse 17, towards the end of the passage we read out. The 72 men came back in great joy. Lord, they said, even the demons obeyed us when we gave them a command in your name. Verse 20. Don't be glad because the evil spirits obey you. Rather be glad because your names are written in heaven. That's true for every one of us. As we trust in Jesus, our names are written in heaven. And so, with that absolute rock-certain confidence that our names are written in heaven, that we cannot in the end lose, that we are t- can be with God now and know him in our lives, through death and into the life to come, we can with joy, with, uh, with gr- the greatest of confidence and in Jesus' authority, tell people, Jesus is in charge.